Okay, I'm joined today by Eric Johnson, who's in his third year as head coach of the University of Denver women's basketball program. Hi, Coach Johnson. How are you doing? Doing all right today. Thank you. Good. Well, um, let's begin by just getting uh, your overall thoughts on this season's schedule, which opens up against Wyoming in Laramie on Friday, November 12th. Well, in our third year in the program, we felt that we've made some significant strides in the last two years. You know, we, I think we surprised a lot of people our first year uh, by having a winning record and uh, beating some teams that we hadn't beaten in the past. You know, first program win over Western Kentucky. Uh, last year, uh, you know, with only really seven players down the stretch of the season, uh, we managed to you know win 18 games, go 18 and 13, 12 and 6 in conference. Uh, we returned most of those best players, Nicole, and we also have a really exciting freshman class coming in. So we felt that we're making progress, and I think when you look at the schedule, you see the challenges that are in front of us. Um, you talk about Wyoming. There's a team that each of the last two years we've opened up with them, and it's been a I mean it's been a one point ball game down the stretch, and each time their veteran players have made a couple huge plays, uh, and they've come out on top by just a couple of points. And so uh, we're really excited to get another crack. We think we're we've made a lot of progress since those first you know couple games, and uh, we can't wait to get up get rolling and get it and get up there. Okay, after your game against Colorado at home on November 16th, you're on the road for the next five games, um, which is sort of similar to how you guys started the season last year. Um, how will you be preparing the team to open up with such a tough road schedule so early on? Well, winning on the road is, is the mark of maturity. I um, was really proud of our team uh, this last year that we were able to, uh, to win six road games in conference and go six and three. Uh, you know, learning to win on the road is just, it's one of those things you talk about it, you can, you can, you know, uh, try to work on your schedule and, and how you handle the team, but you know what? When it really comes down to it, it's about the team having confidence that we know what, how we play basketball and we can do it anywhere. We used to say, look, it doesn't matter whether you're in Antarctica, Colorado, or in Hawaii, you know, the same principles apply. And I think our team finally got that last year. So I'm hoping that, you know, with the road schedule, uh, you know, that we'll be, we'll be up, and, you know, up and rolling and, and get tested early and uh, have to learn some of those lessons with a lot of these young players as well. Okay, still looking at the non-conference portion of the schedule, it seems like you and your staff have really sort of upped the ante this season, um, scheduling some pretty tough opponents in Georgia, Oregon, Montana, and Vanderbilt. Talk a little bit about that. Well, you know, you talk about raising this program to national prominence, you know, uh, the administration here, the university, they really believe in what we can do. You know, you look around this place, and we've got beautiful facilities. We've got great academics. We're in an unbelievable location. I'm looking out the window at the Rocky Mountains right now. Uh, we can recruit really top-level student athletes here. Uh, well, if you want to be among, you know, the, the big dogs, you got to go play them. And so, you know, Vanderbilt, perennial top-10 team. Uh, Oregon leads the nation in scoring. You know, Paul Westhead has their run-and-gun offense going. Uh, you know, Montana wins that league every single year. Uh, Georgia, again, perennial top 10 team from the SEC, and uh, it's, it's going to be exciting. And so we'll find out a lot about ourselves, but I really believe in these players, um, and I, I don't want to sell them short. We want to be able to find out really where we are so that when we get into league play and we shoot for those top spots, it's not a shock to the system. We know what it's like to play with the best, and uh, I think we'll be ready to go. All right, so um, also on the schedule are the other four top D1 programs in the state of Colorado. Is this going to be like a continuing trend in the years to come, and why is it so important to play all four? I really believe in the state of Colorado. I think we've got great girls basketball at the high school level. There are so many awesome programs here, great coaches. Uh, and I think the more that the Division I schools play each other, the more excitement you build and the more rivalries come out of it. So one of the first things I did when I got here was get on the phone with the other, you know, with the other college coaches and say, hey, we've got to play each other. And so uh, last year we played all four. Uh, this year we're going to play all four in Colorado, Colorado State, uh, Northern Colorado, and Air Force. Um, you know, we've, uh, we've really taken a lot of pride in being the top team in Colorado. And the only way you can really claim that is when you go play them. Um, you know, we've had the best record of all the teams in Colorado for the last, you know, for the last two years, and we hope to do so again. Uh, but either way, win or lose, those are great games. I think it's, it's good to just get, uh, again, the basketball community in our state uh, to see that what great college basketball there is being played here uh, and just continue to grow all the programs. And I'm big fans of all those coaches. They're all doing a great job. Okay, and keeping it in mind with, um, you know, what Colorado is in for and what they can come and see, um, let's talk a little bit about the home schedule this year. Uh, fans will get the chance to see Colorado, Vanderbilt, Air Force, San Jose State, Northern Colorado, and UTEP, just to name a few, um, all before the new year. With this uh, caliber of talent 
coming into Magnus. What are some of the things that you are preparing your team for? Well, we love playing at home. Uh, you know, we, you and I talked just a few minutes ago about winning on the road. Huge key in college basketball. But winning at home is just as important because, you know, most teams play much better at home. We have a great home court advantage here. We play in a beautiful arena, uh, but so many of the teams that we play, they don't want to run with us at a mile high. And so, you know, we really work on pushing the, 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 the pace of the game, pushing transition, uh, and really being relentless, not letting the other team rest. Um, and we also, you know, work on mental toughness of that, of that same thing. Is that hey, when you know, when when you can finally get an opponent down a little bit, hey, let's. That's when we got to kick it up a notch. And so, you know, when you're playing at home, uh, just using that confidence to be able to to you know to build uh, the way we play fast together uh, and and be able to execute, you know, uh, all all the things that we do. Okay, switching gears, let's talk a little bit about the uh, Sun Belt Conference portion of the schedule. Um, you open up at home against Louisiana Lafayette on the 29th of December, and then turn right around and play Arkansas Little Rock on the 2nd to open up the new year. And both of those teams have kind of become sort of a rivalry for the, for the DU Women's Basketball Program. Talk, talk a little bit about opening up the Sun Belt Conference schedule and then also, you know, going throughout the season. Sure. Well, obviously every conference game is huge, you know. Uh, Lafayette, Louisiana Lafayette, the Raging Cajuns is an up-and-coming team. Uh, you know, we've been able to handle them the last couple years, but uh, they've got some young talent and they're, they're going to continue to get better. Uh, part of the problem with having beaten some people in these first couple of years is we're no longer an unknown quantity. We're no longer the underdog. People are gunning for us, and, and when they see Denver on the schedule, uh, they get up for those games. And, uh, and we talk about that with our kids all the time. Uh, in, in Arkansas Little Rock, I, I don't have to tell you, Nicole, that is, you know, that's the rivalry game for us. They're in our half of the, of the conference. Uh, we've played them four times uh, over the last two years and we haven't beaten them yet. Every game has been a one-point game, you know, with five minutes left. They've got some great players. They're one of the best defensive teams in the country. Uh, they take care of the ball, but I think they were number one in the nation you know, the last week of the season uh, in, in low turnovers. They are a phenomenal basketball team, and they were the class of our field in the NCAA tournament, winning a first-round game against Georgia Tech, going to the second round of the tournament. Uh, so I mean, that's a statement game for us. And so getting that one January 2nd, uh, you know, here in Denver, believe me, that's one that our players are going to be gunning for. Uh, obviously, we have to play every single game, but believe me, we'll be uh, when, when that one comes around, uh, you'll see the Pioneers ready to roll. And then in traveling in the Sun Belt, talk a little bit about some of those games towards the end of the season. Because then you have to turn right around and go right into the Sunbelt Conference Tournament in Hot Springs. Sure. Well, you know, road games, again, were something that we had some success with. You know, we were able to win at some places last year that we didn't win the year before. Um, we've got some two t really tough road games at Western Kentucky and at Middle Tennessee. Uh, you know, those teams both beat us last year. Uh, we had beaten Western Kentucky the year before for the first time in program history. Uh, they turned around and beat us on a, you know, on a close one. We had a buzzer beater rim out at the very end. A lot of those went down for us last year, but that was one that uh, I thought it was going to go into, and it didn't. So believe me, those are, those are games that I think will be real statements for us, and hopefully that's what we get from playing those tough non-conference games on the road, is that when we go into Western Kentucky on, uh, on January 5th, it, it won't be a shock to the system. Our kids will be ready. They will have been in hostile environments against quality competition, and there's no substitute for that kind of experience, uh, and, and hopefully it will pay dividends. Okay, and let's talk a little bit about the team. You got six incoming freshmen, plus you get Morgan Shell back this year, or you actually get to use her this year since she sat out all year last year. So with that being such a big nucleus of newcomers, how are they working themselves into the team? Well, what's exciting about this year, and you know, so many things have to come together for us to be successful, but the, the potential is truly there. Uh, five players that played major, major minutes last year. Four starters, and you know those starters played, I mean, maximum minutes with, the, with our lack of depth. Serafini was our sixth player coming off the bench. Uh, so we've got five players that have truly been tested in big games, on the road, at home, against quality competition. Then you've got these exciting six freshmen, uh, really high-level recruits. Uh, you know, unfortunately, they haven't played a minute of college basketball yet, and so it's pretty hard to really uh, prognosticate exactly how they're going to be come November come December, come January, uh, freshmen develop at different rates. We've been lucky enough the last couple of years to have some phenomenal freshmen. Caitlin Murdoch goes out freshman year, fre you know, freshman of the year in the conference. Emmy Smith uh, comes out, leads the league in assists as our freshman point guard last year. Uh, so I'm hoping that a few of those guys are going to be ready to go, uh, and I believe they will. It's a very exciting class. Morgan Shell, you mentioned, 
uh, as a red shirt last year, transferred from SMU. Uh, does have some college experience, been out of basketball for a year now. Uh, you know, she's battling some injuries still, but she's coming back. And then Abby Licklider was our other uh, red shirt last year coming off an ACL. So there's a couple kids that at least understand the program. They know our system. Uh, they understand sort of the level that we need to work at. But the freshmen are working really hard. They're in summer school right now. They're all training very hard with, uh, with our strength coach. Uh, they're in the weight room, they're conditioning, they're playing together, they're working out together. Um, I just had them over for a barbecue at the house yesterday. There's smiles all around. I think that they see their, they're starting to see their own potential. They've worked through some of the culture shock of, of college, you know, the level of college basketball at, the, at this level in Division I. And uh, I, I'm just excited to hit the floor, Nicole. I think it's, uh, there's a lot of potential. A lot of things have to happen for this to work. Uh, but, you know, just having that kind, of, uh, that kind of potential to work with is really exciting for a coach. All right, Coach. Well, thanks so much for sitting down with us today, and good luck as we head into preseason and then the season gets underway. Thank you so much.